this is going to be something different for me. Uh, as a matter of fact, my wife asked me if I would to write it down and pass it out to everybody. <laughs> and uh, somebody it gets a little bit on the complicated side. So I, this is going to be one of those when I speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down. But uh, in order to get it out the way I think it and the way I studied it and the way I looked at it, I'm going to have to slow down every once in a while to get that. But if you have your Bible, I'm going to do a lot of Bible tonight. Amen. If you will, turn with me to Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. Now this is a short verse of scripture, and we're going to use this actually as a springboard for what is to be for. I, I tell you what I'm going to preach on tonight. What the donkey knows. Amen. Amen. The donkey knew something. And I'm going to share with you tonight what the donkey knows. If you will look with me in Zechariah 9 and 9, and then we'll go into the 21st chapter of Matthew. And uh, from there, I'll be jumping back to Daniel. But I give you plenty of warning about Daniel. But when we look at Zechariah, the Bible said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Now in Matthew chapter 21, beginning with verse 1, And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and they were come to, to Bethphage, or Bethphage, under the Mount of uh, Olives, then sent Jesus two of his disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find a, a, a colt, or find an ass, and a colt, her, 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 forgive my eyes, I'm sorry, loose them, and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say all unto thee, unto you, you shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet Zechariah, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee meek, and sitting upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went, and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him their own. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitude that was before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest shall we pray. Our Father, thank you for the word of God, for all you've given unto us. And may we tonight reach back and somehow, some way, somehow, may we exhort what you have given us and give it to this congregation to the going and building of the kingdom of God. And we love you for all accomplished in Jesus' name. Amen. When Zechariah wrote this prophecy, Jerusalem was in ruins. Jerusalem had been defeated. Jerusalem had been actually torn down. The walls had torn down. The gates were torn down. The temple was burned. And Zechariah, instead of focusing right here on the rebuilding that was going on at that time, or on focusing on the tragedy of the city of David being destroyed, he focused rather on the coming of the Messiah. Amen. And he looked ahead to the time when Messiah would come, and he said he will be judged, and he will have with him a happy salvation. Amen. Now for thousands of years, people had offered their sacrifices unto God. They had brought the blood of animals. They had poured out gallon after gallon after gallon of blood, amen, to give to the Lord. But now all of a sudden, Zechariah said, there's one coming whose sacrifice is not going to cover sin, but it's going to do away with sin. Amen. I don't know about you, yes. but that is exciting 
commandment. Yes, amen. To know that my sins are not simply covered. Amen. They are forgiven amen. and forgotten. Yes, amen. Glory. Thank you, thank you. Amen. Yes. Every once in a while, I remember my wife is to uh, we pretty well stay at one another all the time. We've been doing that for about 52 years now. And uh, if I ever, I told her not long ago, I said, you know, that's the first time in a long time I feel like I have really preached a sermon. And she said, it's about time you've been trying 54 years. <laughs> Amen. So we take advantage of one another when we get up because she can't afford to say anything back to me sitting on the back. And so that's the reason. And I looked and I think God didn't just, I remember the Lord told me when I, and I'll testify to this, when I was in the Jitsu Perry unit, wasn't supposed to leave. In fact, I didn't leave. I died four times. But Laying in that unit, the Lord spoke to me. And I said, I remember seeing a vision. Everything turned, now this is a beautiful shape, right? but everything turned the ugliest going I've ever seen in my life. And I said, God, I don't understand this. Why is everything this ugly? And right in the middle of it was a snake. Now, I don't like snakes. About this big around. And we're standing up about this high. And I said, Lord, what's going on? Where are the angels? Where are the bright lights that everybody sees? I'm not seeing that. What is going on? I'm ready to go. And God said, son, there's two things you have straightened out. And I said, you tell me what they are. Get me out of here and I'll do them. He told me what the word got me out of there and I'm done. Amen. I promise you. And my wife looked at me the other day and said, You've got so and 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 so. And she just kept on and on and on. And I looked at her and I said, God said two and I did it. <laughs> Amen. Now leave me alone. I don't have to do any more. God said two. But I'm glad that God didn't just cover my sin, but God did away with them. Amen. Yes. They are forever forgiven and they are forgotten by the Son of God. They have been erased and I am free tonight in the power and in the love and in the glory of Almighty God. When we look at this prophecy, I have to go back to the book of Daniel and I've got to look at Daniel and we're going to, we're going to look at, if you don't mind, Daniel chapter 9. And we'll begin reading with verse 24. Daniel chapter 9, beginning with verse 24. Daniel's prophecy actually corresponds with Zechariah's prophecy. Oh, glory. And it is amazing to me the order that God puts everything in. Now, I'm very orderly. I went in the room tonight, and everything was black. I knew I needed a pair of brown socks. So I counted from the left where our black socks are, and then the gray socks, and then the brown socks. And I didn't have to look. In the dark, I picked out a pair of brown socks. And I checked when I got to church, and I looked down, and sure enough, they're brown. Amen. I love order. I do. And I like, I like to look at God's word when there's an order. In Daniel chapter 9, beginning with verse 24, the Bible said, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sin and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and the, of the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth 
of the commandment in, in to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem under Messiah. He's talking about Messiah coming. Uh, the prince shall be seven weeks and fourscore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. That would stop right there. I could go on and on about Daniel and the tribulation and all of that is in the book of Daniel. It's right here in this chapter. But I want to just stop right there. First of all, it said 70 weeks are determined. Now, when the Bible speaks of 70 weeks, you've got to take that as 70 years. Amen. And 7 times 70. Now, remember, we're talking about Messiah coming. We're talking about Messiah revealing himself. And Daniel said it will be 70 weeks. Seven days in a week. Seven times 70 is 490 years. Amen. But now, notice also, it said one week. Seven or seven, the one week. Amen. And seven days to a week, that's 49 years. From the day Daniel prophesied this until the time that Jerusalem was restored and rebuilt was exactly, are you ready for this? Seven times seven is what? 49. From the day that Daniel prophesied this until the rebuilding of Jerusalem was exactly 49 years. Amen. And it said in troublous time, if you've read Nehemiah, you know that they built that city with swords on their side. And there was a trumpet that sounded, if they come over here, we're going to sound the trumpet and everybody go over there. If they come over here, we're going to sound the trumpet and everybody come over here. In other words, it was built in troublous time. Just exactly like the man of God. Just exactly prophecy was prophesied that it would happen. Amen. Amen. Now there's two ways of looking at this. The next figure is verse 25. Where the Bible said three score and two weeks. Or in other words a score is 20. Three score three times 20 is 60 and two is 62. Seven weeks have already gone. You've got to add the seven to the 62. And that is 69 weeks. Remember, we're prophesying of Messiah revealing himself. That leaves 69 weeks. Seven days in a week. Seven times 69 is 483. Or take 490 and subtract 7 from it and you get what? 483. The Jewish calendar is not like our calendar. The Jewish calendar is made up of 30 days every single month. 360 days a year. 360 times 483, which is the number of years and the number of days to get the total number of days. And you're going to come out, if you want to figure that, here's the answer, I'll give it to you, you don't have to figure it, but it's going to come out to 178,880 days. Amen. Now, from the time Daniel made that prophecy, are you ready for this? From the time Daniel made that prophecy until A.D., there would have been 1,700 or 178,880 days would have come out to have been April the 6th, 32 A.D. Ready? That is the exact day that Jesus sat on the donkey and they rode down the mountainside and they proclaimed him Hosanna to the son of David Hosanna in the highest Amen. Here's the one we've 
been looking for. Here's the Messiah revealed on the very day that Daniel said it was going to happen and happen at that identical time. Could I tell you God is a God of order? Could I tell you that, that we are chosen of God? Oh, when I look at that donkey and I see a donkey going down the mountainside, there was something that that donkey knew. Amen. Oh, glory. When Jesus came, he fulfilled to the letter over 300 prophecies. The odds of one man doing that are so high, they can't figure it. But I'll tell you what it does come down to. If one man fulfilled 48 prophecies to the letter, it would be the chances of one man doing that are one in one with 157. You might know what that is. I don't. One in one comma 157 zeros. That's the chance one man would have of fulfilling 48 and Jesus fulfilled to the letter over 300. Amen. What does all that mean? That means that he is who he said he right. is. Amen. Our Savior. Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Yes. That's exactly what it means. It means I can depend on him. It means I can rely on him. It means I can call upon him. Oh, yes. When he got on that note, yes. There are some things that the donkey knew. He knew, I am chosen by God. Amen. Wow. Well, go look in the mirror, and you will see somebody else is not a donkey. If you look in the mirror, you haven't seen a donkey. But you're going to see somebody else that was chosen by God. God chose every one of us. He is a personal Savior. Now, Sister George can probably sing it. I'm not going to attempt it. He's a personal Savior. He did my soul a personal favor. Amen. Amen. He is a personal Savior. He came to every one of us as an individual. In the book of Luke, chapter 15, chapter of Luke, there are three parables that are given. And Jesus puts himself in the place of every one of them. First of all, he is a shepherd looking for what a sheep would. Amen. 99 are in the fold. But he's out there looking for one. A sheep. Amen. He's an individual saying, and there's a woman and he's looking for what? A coin. She had nine, but she's looking for one that she lost. Amen. He is a son or a father looking for a wayward son. One. Amen. He is a Savior that loves every one of us. He is our Savior. He is he has a church. He saved every one of us, but he's an individual savior. Lord, thy king, Zechariah said, cometh unto thee. Matthew reiterates, thy king cometh unto thee. Do you remember when you got saved? Amen. I do. Little old bitty church. Little bitty church. Amen. About where that window is, yonder, is where I was standing. And somehow, that Sunday morning worship service, I got out in the aisle. I didn't mean to. I didn't want to. And God touched a young woman's heart and said, walk around this church. And I saw her coming. And I couldn't move. My shoes were like they were nailed to the floor. And I said, Lord, 
What a question. But I said, Lord, don't let that woman come by and judge me. I don't want that. And I couldn't move. I grabbed a tube and tried to pull myself in. I couldn't move. That woman walked by and touched my arm. I believe it was 25,000 volts of electricity. I think that's what it was. That went through my body. And I shook and I trembled. And I said, Lord, I'm not going. And I grabbed that pew. My knuckles turned white. And I held on. That woman walked down the front, looked at the preacher, and said, God told me to do it again. I said, oh, Lord, no. No, here she comes. God, get me out of here. Don't let me stand here. Get me back in that pew. I don't want to stand. She walked by and touched my arm and turned around. And she was going to say, don't you want to go to the altar? But she was talking to the back of my feet. I was only dead woman. And I hit that altar and I prayed until God forgave my sin. Amen. Not everybody else. It was mine. That God was dealing with. Church, I'm going to tell you, he is a personal Savior. The King is coming unto thee. Amen. Hallelujah. Every one of us, there's only one of the sound of my voice that doesn't have a need. Amen. And he wants to talk to you personally. Oh, glory. Yes. I came here thinking that I could be a blessing. Amen. And that I could be, I could help Brother Mark. Amen. That's what I thought. Yes. And all of a sudden, I find out my license has been suspended. I can't see the chart. My wife's going in to have a pacemaker put in. So she'll get more energy. I don't know if she needs it. Amen. And we go from this to this, instead of three in the family, I now have six in the family. We're drinking on an average eight gallons of milk a week. And of course they give that away. Amen. They don't charge you for it at all. They just give it to you. Yeah. Amen. And I looked at her the other day. And I said, what did we do wrong? And she said, you got me, but whatever it is, let's straighten it out. I said, you better believe it. Amen. I look at the Word of God. He's just and lowly. You know what that don't, let me tell you what the don't in you. The don't in you, I'm chosen of God. When he started down that mountain that heard everybody shouting, Oh, glory. Oh, wouldn't it have been great to say, hey, look at that. Everybody sees me coming. Everybody is clapping their hand. Everybody is stomping their feet. Everybody is throwing the branches in the way. Everybody is, is glorifying me. Amen. But he knew it's not me they're clapping for. It's the one on my back. Amen. It's the one I'm telling. I'm going to tell you, church, it's Jesus that they want to see. They don't want to see us. They don't want to look at us. They want to see Jesus and our obligation is show them the Lord. Hallelujah. The donkey knew that. The donkey knew. Most dignitaries don't ride a donkey. They ride a white horse. Not many years ago, I traded automobiles and I got a Buick Escalade. Wow. They just come out. I didn't know what an Escalade was. I got in that thing and I cranked it up and I test drove it. I carried it home and I told my wife, I said, drive that thing. <laughs> wow. It drives like Cadillac. It goes like a moon. It's one of the most easy riding, easy driving 
So guess what? I talked her into it and we bought that thing. I didn't keep it six months because the gas mileage was 16 miles to the gallon highway. Yeah, oh it rode good, oh it drove good, but it didn't get good gas mileage and I am a skin flint. I want gas mileage. I don't care how it rides. I don't care what it looks like. I want gas mileage. I got a letter the other day saying, if you will sell us that Buick Escalade back, we'll give you so much money for it. And I looked at my wife and I said, if I had it, I'd sell it. <laughs> but I don't have it, so I can't sell it. Somebody else has got it. And they never took my name off of Mail out a letter to every idiot you can find. Amen. And I'm still on the idiot list because I get them every, every week or two or every month or two. They still want me to trade my Escalade in. My Lord, I traded it in six months after I got the thing. And they never got word. Amen. I, when I look at the word of God and I realize how much he loved me. One drop of his blood did what millions of gallons of blood had not been able to do down through the centuries. Amen. And that is to pardon sin, to do away with sin, to eradicate sin, to heal our body by the blood that he shed. Amen. Amen. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. I know. This has been a different one than what you're used to hearing. It's not up and stay up. It's up and down and up and down. I know that. And I apologize for that. Well, in order to get everything across, I had to slow down. You can't multiply 483 times 360 if you don't slow down. So I had to slow down. But what I want to get across is Jesus is exactly who he said he was. Yes, amen. And the donkey knew that. And the donkey knows. Dignitaries don't ride donkeys. They ride white horses. The Jews wanted a king that rode in a chariot and defeated the enemy and carried a sword and a spear and a shield and was a conquering Hebrew hero. That's not what Jesus was. He came meek and he came lowly. Oh, glory. When he was in the garden and they arrested him and Peter pulled the sword out, cut off the high, the sword of the high priest cut off his ear. Jesus healed the ear and said, put your sword out. Amen. They live by the sword you die by the sword. Amen. Don't you know that presently, you ready for another figure about this? Don't you know that I could call 12 legions of angels? 12, a legion is 20,000. You multiply 12 times 20 and you're going to come up with 72,000 angels. Get this math. If one angel could kill 185,000, and one angel did when Hezekiah was king, amen, one angel did away with the Syrian army that was camped out there, he killed 185,000. 72,000 times 185,000, you don't have to do it, I've already got it up here, it comes to 13 billion, 320 million. Amen. That's more people than there is in the world. My Lord, have mercy. God could have eradicated the world, but he didn't do it. Amen. He loved you enough to give his life on Calvary that you might be saved. Hallelujah. Glory. My wife told me when I got through to tell everybody I'm through. <laughs> and I don't have any business pushing when I get through. Because I don't have anything to say. And I'm through. But I would like to say, acknowledge 
consume as much as the donkey did. Amen. Do you realize in the last few weeks, I preached on a rooster calling and a donkey knowing? <laughs> Lord have mercy. I don't want any more animals until I get to the whale that I need to involve myself with. But when we look at the Word of God and we realize that a donkey knows absolutely sometimes more than we know, we need to acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Savior and let that world out there Amen. see us carrying Him Amen. and not throwing our chest out Amen. and saying, look at me. Amen. 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 Thank you for listening to me tonight. You're very patient. I know two people that made a special effort to get here. They're here all the time, so you don't know they made a special effort. But there's some things going on today they weren't supposed to be here, and they made it. And I thank God for that, and I mean Amen. that. Amen. Lord bless you. I'm going to turn the service back to our pastor, and I'm going to do it with you, inviting you to pray one for another. Amen. Every one of us need prayer. And you know what old luckily is saying? Every one of us need prayer and every one of us need practice. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Willie. Amen. I don't know where you got all them figures from. I ain't found them all yet. <laughs> But the Lord have blessed you, brother. Amen. So every time you see a donkey down the road, now you need to stop and say, hey, donkey, what do you know? You might learn something. Amen. Appreciate Brother Ben and Sister Wilson being with us. Him and help us out. And I do appreciate all of you tonight. I want to remind you about our revival. It starts the first Sunday in uh, November, Sunday morning with Brother Tim. Yeah. Be running through Wednesday night, be in prayer for it. Uh, that God will give us a great revival. And also, I want to remind you about our service Sunday morning, Sunday school. Yeah. And also, remember uh, Saturday week is our uh, hot dog, a hamburger, peanut ball, and thing. So you may plan to be here with us, and God bless you. Yeah. You enjoyed yourself tonight? Yeah. Would you give the Lord another good hand clap? Amen. It's good to have you tonight. If you stand, we'll be dismissed. Ask Sister Beecher to dismiss us tonight.